Ricardo's Tales. One morning I woke up very early. While I was breakfasting, I realized eating didn't make sense. Because sooner or later, we're all gonna die. So I went to the grocery shop to complain. They were very kind to me. The owner invited me to his house. I was welcomed by his nice and prosperous maid. And she fed us chocolate cookies. They were really good. After the snack, we went to play outside. We played a ball for a bit. I was winning all the time, and the owner was upset. But we were friends anyway, and we loved each other. When it got dark, we gathered inside in front of the fireplace, telling funny ghost stories. The maid was laughing all the time. I stopped by for dinner, where I ate like a glutton. There were cherry pie, cornflakes, tangerines, licorice, grapefruits, sangria, soup, and chocolate cookies. After dinner, the owner showed me his big pan collection, and we played a bit with his dog. And by pure chance was also his Uncle Peter. We said goodbye with sadness, and we thought it was right to erase our memories so we would never meet again. Surely something not so sweet. That's so sweet. Two years ago, my imaginary girlfriend gave me a pirate. I didn't know how to use it. And I had to throw it away, because I had to throw it from the fifth floor to see what would happen. So I went to buy myself a new pet. The choice was between the actor who played Greg on Dharma and Greg, or a nice turtle. The turtle won. Its name was Elephant. We were close friends. We climbed on street lamps and we recited poetry against Nazis. We tore up $10 bills to annoy a guy who looked just like Bob Dylan. We drank water right from the bottle. We threw stones to hookers. And we pretended to be real estate agents at the bus stop. It would have been a wonderful friendship if we hadn't slept together and later have been forced to stop seeing each other. Because even though we had no feelings for one another, being friends would have been too weird. That's so sweet. In a period of my life, I attended a course to become the son of a lawyer. Lessons were difficult like my teeth, and they never gave us milk. Even if I written pussy rules on the wall. Our teacher was the legendary Bud Spencer, who was laughing all the time. It was impossible to stop him, especially when even the policemen crouching on the floor were laughing. They were in love with the most beautiful girl in the world, who was sitting at the desk in front of mine. During one lesson, Bud Spencer brought us outside because there was a nice weather, and we went to a bottle factory to throw stones at the employees. He hated them because he didn't understand why the iced tea cups were bigger than the others. Then the bomb came down and everybody died, except for the cockroaches. That's so sweet. One day, my friend and I bought 1,543 cereal boxes because we wanted to win the prize that allowed you to visit the factory where they produce He-Man sleepers. We found the ticket inside the first box. But the fun thing was opening them, so we kept doing it till the end. My friend went crazy, but since he was already crazy, he became normal. And I spent several days teaching him how to laugh. And since he couldn't do it, I asked Sus for help. When I went to visit him, he was covered in lipstick all over his face. And we burst out laughing, as if we were laughing about everything, even about nothing. He introduced me to Lachnodeus, god of the thunders, Kashinka, god of money, Fukoden, sex goddess, and finally Rustozen, god of the chickens. Everybody hated me, and they decided I could only go back home if I passed some tests. But I felt sleepy, and so I fell asleep there on the floor. Then I woke up, and I realized it was just a dream. In fact, I had never fallen asleep. And so I said goodbye to the gods, and I went home to sleep. That's so sweet. One day I was in a store of frozen puppets, and some bullies said that they wanted to beat me up. I didn't want that, and I hoped we could become good friends. Unfortunately, they didn't want this, and they took off my shoes to throw them at my elbow. 
One of them grabbed my ear, while the other two punched my fingers. The worst part was when they made me believe I was drowning. I could not tolerate all of this, so I decided I had to defend myself in some way. And so I took my blades for cutting, and I hurt them severely, immobilizing them on the ground. I opened the stomach of the first one, and I saw the live rat inside it. I removed the teeth of the second one and replaced them with nails, and I burned him alive. Then I removed the last one's eyes and tongue. I killed his mother over his body, and then I defecated on them. That's so sweet. Five years ago, I went to a beautiful square to see people. Everyone seemed attracted to something really absurd, something really special, like my teeth. Wait, no, just like teeth. The city seemed completely insane. There was a huge crowd and everyone was in a fight just to able to see. But I wasn't interested and I played Snake 2 on my cell phone. Three days after two days later, someone knocked on the door of my house. The noise was so loud that even all the glass got broken. Even the glass I held in my hand got broken. It made a deep cut in my hand and I called it George. We were very good friends. But one time I blew inside it and it made me fly, taking me to London. I took the tube and went to Piccadilly Circus to ask what time it was. But I forgot how to walk for a few seconds. When I got there, it was too late and I started to cry. That's so sweet. One day I was afraid of ghosts and just by coincidence, a ghost appeared in front of me. It looked like a sheet with two holes as eyes and a perforated hole as a mouth. That obviously, it used to speak. It smelled like a ham omelette and it made the same noise that sparkling water makes when you open the bottle for the first time. He wanted to kill me, but first he asked me if I could be his friends for one day. We became friends immediately. We played at having fun and at the end of the evening we had fun playing. I called him Bob the Ghost because before he was gone he gave me some chocolate cookies and flew away forgetting to kill me. From that day, I've never been scared of ghosts again. And I decided to tell a friend about it. So loud that I became really annoying and I was locked in a dark room without an iron. That's so sweet. When I graduated, I decided that if I'd become a soldier, I would have been handsome and strong. Strong enough to make the lions run away. So I did some tests to become one. They ask some questions to fill in the admission form and for every correct answer, you will receive a chocolate cookie. They were so good. Later, they made me run in the mud while it was raining and they understood I was ready to become a soldier. But they did a last test in which I had to shoot someone and captivate them. I mistakenly killed my best friend's sister, which wasn't exactly someone. In fact, even the animator doesn't know how to draw this. However, there was a general laughter and a beautiful music that made us all become friends. Even the lizard I kept in my pocket jumped out to congratulate me. But he told a friend of mine off because one day he had seen him riding a motorbike without a helmet. And he grabbed his ass. That's so sweet. One Saturday night, I came home with the idea to masturbate watching the quotation of gold when I found a lamp. I decided to rub it hard to show my ex I was a clean and tidy guy. But she, from the other side of the street, yelled that you shouldn't pick things up from the ground. And I smiled and started coughing. Immediately after 10 smiles, a blue man came out of the lamp. I wanted to chew him, but he said no. He yelled that I had to express three wishes and that he would make them come true. I thought it was something pleasing for me. And as a first wish, I asked him to let me listen to a guy with a stadium-like voice. As a second one, to add a new letter to the alphabet. And as the last wish, to make soap edible. The genie was proud of me because I wasn't selfish and therefore he gave me a cooking book in Spanish. It was full of photos but they mostly had nothing to do with food. My favorite was one with a senior who dislocated his leg helping his wife take her jacket off. That's so sweet. 
One day I enrolled in a photography course. The teacher was an expert and well prepared. Not only did he teach us all the technical aspects related to light and composition, but he managed to develop our artistic sensitivity and to bring it out to exalt it and make it stronger than ever. Each of us had managed to have his own defined and recognizable style, so we thought it could be a good idea to organize our own personal exhibition. The hall was full. Many people stopped to observe our photos and to comment on them, creating ideas and discussion that even we had previously ignored. The guests also enjoyed the snacks. I prepared them with Francesca, a classmate I just started dating. The guests donated something that by the end of the evening amounted around the total result of $75 and $27. The same night, we all went to celebrate in a pizzeria using the money we had earned. We spent hours laughing and joking. A very nice, joyful evening. We were a really united and tight group of friends. How oh, I wish I hadn't killed them all with a spike bat on the skull and raped them one by one, filling them up with my semen. That's so sweet. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Click here if you want to see more videos. Sounds like a good idea, don't you think? Hmm? I don't think so. Actually, this cartoon was pretty stupid. Why did you watch this? You're fucking crazy, man! Come on!